Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome back to Channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl, gear, and more. We're back doing one of my favorite segments, Ask Me Anything, AMA, where you ask me questions and I do my best to answer them. Without further ado, let's get to those questions. Okay, this first one is actually um, not a question, but a comment from viewer Hoffy1. And Hoffy1 writes, not to nitpick, but Nagaoka is pronounced Nagoka, not Nagaoka. Thanks for the awesome videos. And uh, Hoffy1, thank you very much for straightening that out. I've talked about the um, Nagoka uh, MP110 cartridge quite a bit, and I, I guess I've been mispronouncing it, and I didn't uh, realize I was doing that. So thank you very much. Okay, I'm sitting here editing this video, and I realize I'm still pronouncing the name of this cartridge wrong. Let's try this again. Nagauka. Nagauka. Back to the video. Okay, speaking of this viewer, Hoffi, Hofi, Hofi, I'm not sure how you pronounce your handle. Uh, he, um, he or she also has a question, and he writes, do you prefer the MP110 cartridge or the Ortofon 2M Blue? Now, these are two cartridges I own and I've talked about before. And I have the Ortofon uh, 2M Blue on my Project Debut Carbon Turntable over there, and I have the MP110 uh, up on my, um, no, not here. I thought I had it on the Hitachi. I have it upstairs on a Sansui uh, turntable I have there. So which one do I prefer? Well, they're actually, I think, two completely, completely uh, different cartridges. Uh, the MP110, to my ears anyway, is a very uh, traditional sounding, um, warm, musical sort of cartridge. It's not very harsh at all. Uh, some may argue that it has this this warmthness, warmth, warmthness, that this warmth comes at the expense uh, of detail, but uh, I think it's fantastic. As I said, traditional sounding cartridge, and that one goes for under $150 US. Now, the Ortofon 2M Blue, uh, I love that cartridge as well. And I would classify that one as a modern sounding cartridge. And with that, I mean, it's not particularly uh, warm. Another way of <laughs> saying that is that it really presents the uh, the music in the grooves as intended without any sort of coloration. There's the argument that the warmer the sounding the cartridge that it's actually sort of coloring the music and, and you don't necessarily want that. Uh, the detail on the Ortofon 2M Blue I think is good and separation is great. That one goes for uh, under $250 US. So I absolutely love both cartridges and I'm going on about this uh, a bit but I think they are two different beasts, two different types of cartridges entirely. I don't think uh, any collector would uh, really be out of place owning both of those cartridges. Okay, this next question comes from Blackguard1013. And uh, he writes, hello, Frank. I'd like to ask what female rock bands you enjoy. Metal is traditionally a male genre, but some of the girls are making inroads too. I couldn't agree with you more, uh, Blackguard1013. Um, of course, there's the Donnas, great um, hard rock band. They've since broken up. I saw them a couple times too. I saw them uh, Lola Palooza 2003, and I saw them play a club here. Uh, of course, the Runaways, um, Girl School. Um, Joan Jett, love Joan Jett. Fantastic live artist. I haven't seen Joan Jett live. Go check her out. Lita Ford. There's also some newer bands. I'll grab a couple records here to show you some uh, female fronted bands. Okay, these um, many of you may not have heard of. These are all sort of in the hard rock genre, uh, but they're definitely, definitely worth checking out. First, it's a Canadian band called Diamonds. Here is their latest release um, called Never Want to Die, and here's uh, the previous one to that called The Brat Pack. These guys are from the Toronto area. Again, female fronted. The rest of the band is dudes, and uh, sort of along the lines of, um, you know, it's it's, it's late 80s hard rock, um, you know, influenced by bands like Motley Crue, uh, Skid Row, um, Guns N' Roses. Uh, anyway, uh, fantastic band. So if you haven't heard of Diamonds, check them out. 
Another Canadian band from Toronto I would highly recommend. Again, Female Fronted is a blood ceremony. This is um, their um, release from a year or two back called Lord of Misrule. And this is really unique uh, sounding. Again, um, the vocalist is female. And she also plays flute on some of the songs. So there's obviously some Jethro Tull comparisons that can be made there. Uh, otherwise, it's sort of gloomy, sort of doomy, sort of Sabbathy, but um, there's also some real pop sensibility on, on some um, some songs, really with um, infectious choruses and that sort of stuff. So Blood Ceremony, another great female fronted band. And one more you may not have heard of is Lucifer. Uh, again, this is kind of doomy and a female fronted vocalist. And her voice is sort of almost operatic and just that combination of sludgy, doomy, Sabbath-like riffs with this uh, female vocal just, I think, works really well. And another band worth checking out, Lucifer. Okay, plowing through the questions or uh, at least trying to. What else do we have here? This next one comes from Evil Strawberry. Love that name. Uh, and uh, Evil, uh, or Mr. Strawberry, writes, Dear Frank, what do you think the worst sounding record is in your collection? I have uh, Black Sabbath 2013 reissue of Technical Ecstasy and Never Say Die. And they both have muddy sound quality. Sorry to hear about that. I haven't actually heard the 2013 Sabbath reissues, um, but it's it's horrible when you buy a, a new release and for whatever reason, um, it's just disappointing. This one is easy for me to answer. This is a record I was so excited to see reissued a few years ago. It's one of my favorite records from the 90s and I got it and it's unlistenable. Um, I never returned it for a variety of reasons, but it's the Infectious Grooves with their debut, The Plague That Makes Your Booty Move. It's the Infectious Grooves. And this was originally released in 1991 and uh, a great, great album that sounds absolutely horrible. It stinks. And I think uh, a big reason that it sounds so horrible is that it was um, released on this green glow in the dark vinyl. And from what I understand, that just that process of making vinyl glow in the dark just adds uh, elements to it that should not be there. And um, just it's it's with this record, the issue is just the background noise and the pops and crackles and just the hiss and it just sounds horrible. It's really disappointing because this particular release is discontinued on CD. So I don't have the CD and I don't think you think it's available on Spotify. So I've been really craving having this in my collection. It's just been uh, so far impossible for me to find. Um, you know, I could probably easily go in Discogs or uh, eBay and, and buy the CD off there. And I'm saying this out loud, it probably should because I do want a copy of Infectious Grooves, their debut in the collection. Okay, what do I have on my paper now? This comes from Mark and he writes questions. So when you were in high school, did you play hockey? And if so, what position did you play? I'm Canadian, but I never played hockey. Uh, sorry, Mark, I can't help you that one. Growing up in high school, I, I didn't actually play any organized sports is more into music and buying music and collecting music and playing guitar and jamming and, and hanging out with musicians. So um, no, I, I did not play hockey uh, in high school or really at, at any point. Uh, that said, NHL postseason is here and my hometown team, the Winnipeg Jets, are uh, headed uh, into the playoffs. So Go Jets, go. Okay, now Ann Scott writes, how do you like your XL7F? Tower speakers. Those are the ones behind me here, made by Fluence. Uh, and Scott writes, I tried to order a pair and it was too much of a hassle. So I went to Best Buy and got a pair of $1,000 JBL Loft 50s for $400. This is a good question, and I've talked about these speakers before, but it has been a while. So these speakers are manufactured, well, these speakers are made by um, a Canadian company called Fluence. They're actually manufactured in China, like everything seems to be nowadays, but Fluence is a Canadian company. They're based in um, Niagara Falls, Ontario. And their products are only available online. So I think I really took a risk when I purchased these because you couldn't hear them, but they have a pretty liberal um, return policy. I did a lot of research and um, I, I ended up buying them probably it's been two or three, um, two or three years now, and as I said, I did a lot of research before uh, I picked them up. And so, what do I think of these? I think they're great. It's got uh, nice mids and highs. It's got a uh, tight bottom end, and uh, yeah, I got nothing bad to say about them. I absolutely love my Fluon speakers. They also started manufacturing turntables recently, I guess, or selling 
uh, turntables. I don't have any experience with those. I'd be curious to try them out, but um, uh, I think I have enough turntables right now that I don't need to buy any more. This is my only one beef um, I do have. Oh, by the way, the speakers were $500. Um, so, yeah, it was a good deal, I thought. Anyway, uh, my one pet peeve with Fluence is, my gosh, some of their marketing is horribly cheesy. Like, guys, what are you thinking? I'll put some screenshots up here. You can see on their website where it talks about these speakers, the XL7 Fs and says these aren't just speakers they are a lifestyle <laughs> the website goes on to uh, say the soundtrack of your life is ambitious so are the fluence XL 7f floor standing speakers what the heck does this mean um, these are platitudes that mean absolutely nothing they should just stick to really rather than talking about um, lifestyle they should really stick to promoting I think the attributes of these speakers XL7F by Fluence because I do think that they are fantastic fantastic speakers okay guys I've talked enough I hope you enjoyed today's episode of AMA ask me anything if you uh, want to weigh in on any of these questions please do in the comments below if you have any questions you want to ask me for a future episode also uh, please feel free to weigh in on that I would love to hear from you remember if you enjoyed today's episode leave a quick like and if you haven't subscribed click this button you'll never miss another episode again I hope you have a fantastic week until next time keep on spinning